Hey everybody, it's Bill Sundstrom. Uh, welcome to IV Estimation uh, using R, and uh, here's my cats uh, to help you out, uh, Satsuki and May. And uh, they're eager to get started, so let's do that right now. Okay, let's get right to it. Uh, I'm going to run through uh, very quickly an example from Stock and Watson Chapter 12, which is estimating the demand elasticity for cigarettes using some U.S. state-level data. And I'm going to focus on just the syntax for running IV regressions in R and not uh, dwell too much on the technicalities or the theory of instrumental variables. We'll deal with that in class and in some other uh, settings. So let me get right to it. In that uh, chapter of Stock and Watson, they use some cigarette consumption data and price data. And uh, this has been the data have been conveniently put into the AER package, which you should have installed on your uh, computer. So let's take a look at what that data set looks like. Uh, here it is, and it's as you can see it's got the state and the year. It's actually a, a panel of a couple of years by states. It has the consumer price index. It has the uh, consumption of packs of cigarettes per capita per year, some income information, the price of cigarettes, uh, and some tax information. So that's what that data set looks like. Uh, we're going to take just the 1995 data, so we're just going to look at uh, a cross-section of states in 1995, and I'm going to create a couple of new variables, most notably the, the log of the real price of cigarettes, which is going to be our x variable of interest, and the log of the quantity uh, of per capita consumption of cigarettes, that's going to be our quantity or our outcome variable, and um, I'm also creating a couple of other variables, which I'll mention in a sec. So let's run that. And let's get down to the uh, setup for IV regressions. So recall that when we run instrumental variables, we're going to have an outcome variable, uh, y, that's going to be our uh, dependent variable. We'll have uh, one or more endogenous variables, x. These are the causal variables of interest. And uh, we suspect that the estimate in an OLS regression for that relationship between y and x might well be biased for a variety of possible reasons. And so we're going to use instruments to try to clean out the endogeneity that's leading to the bias. Uh, and that's what the instruments are. In addition, in these regressions, we may have a fourth class of variables besides y, x, and any instruments. And that would be any additional exogenous variables that are not instruments. And those could be various controls. So in our example, we're, our y variable, or dependent variable, is the log of the quantity of uh, consumption per capita of cigarettes. The x variable of interest is the log of price. And the relationship between log of quantity and log of price on a demand curve would be an estimate of the demand elasticity. So that's what we really want to get at out of this exercise. The instrument or instruments that we use have to have a very particular set of properties. To be valid, as we will discuss in class, they have to be uh, both uh, exogenous in the sense that their only impact on the outcome variable is by way of their influence on x, the endogenous variable, and they have to be relevant, which is to say they have to be uh, determinants of x. So in this case, we're looking for something that affects the price of cigarettes that consumers pay, so that's the x, and that's its only influence on y. Now, in the case of supply and demand, what this means is if we're trying to estimate the demand elasticity, we need a variable or variables that we think affects the supply price that consumers are paying, but is not determined by shifts in demand for the product, cigarettes. And in this example, uh, Stock and Watson use a tax variable for that. And the tax variable they use is called TDIF. And what this is, is it's the component of the sales tax on cigarettes that people pay that's due to the general non-cigarette sales tax. And the presumption is that that's something that does affect the price you pay for cigarettes, but it is not uh, really a function of what's going on in the cigarette market. It's largely uh, completely exogenous. And uh, that's the justification for using that as an instrument. So let's run uh, the OLS regression, which could be biased as an estimate of demand. You'll notice we have the usual LM, log of quantity, as a function of the log of price. 
And uh, the problem here is that that relationship between quantity and price is quite likely reflecting both demand and supply. So we would not expect this to give us a good unbiased estimate of the demand elasticity. So when we run this, again with the caveat that this could be a biased estimate of demand elasticity, we get the following, that the estimated slope here between log quantity and log price is about negative 1.2. And given that we're using a log-log specification, we could think of that as a potential estimate of the elasticity of demand. But really, we know that that's probably not just the demand elasticity, but reflects uh, the relationships uh, of supply and demand determining price and quantity across these states. So to try to correct for that, we're going to use IV regression. And IV regression in R is very straightforward. It's set up very much the same way you run ordinary least squares, but the command rather than being LM is IV reg, as shown there. And then in parentheses, we have uh, this expression, which looks a lot like what you'd have in a least squares regression. Y is the dependent variable, log of quantity, the squiggle. X is the uh, regressor of interest, log of price. And if we want to, we can also add additional controls, which we're just going to call W. Um, initially, we won't have any of those. Now, what's new here is that then we have a vertical bar in this expression. And then after the bar, we have a couple more variables separated by pluses. If we included any additional control variables W, we need to have them before and after the bar. And after the bar, we would also have any of our instruments. So that's going to be the T diff variable in this case. And otherwise, the syntax is entirely the same as the LM. So the key here is R needs to know what are the endogenous variable or variables and what are the instruments. And how it can tell is that the endogenous variable, the price in this case, is only appearing to the left of the bar. And the instruments only appear to the right of the bar. So that's the rule you have to use in setting this up. And once you remember that, it's trivial to run this regression. So here it is. IV1, the quantity regressed on the price, then the bar, and in this case we just have the one instrument, T diff, and that's how it works. The IV regression is going to report what we call the second stage of two stage least squares, which is the regression that we're usually really interested in. And you'll see it looks exactly like the output from our ordinary least squares. We have the dependent variable, log of quantity. We have the x variable of interest, log of price. And we have this estimate, which we hope is now a more unbiased estimate of the price elasticity of demand, negative 1.08 in this case. Pretty close to unit elastic. Uh, now, that's not too far away from the one we got from ordinary least squares, negative 1.2. So in, in a sense, we may be learning here that that original OLS regression wasn't that biased in the first place. But uh, if we think there is potential bias, this is a better estimate of that demand elasticity, assuming that we're competent in the validity of our instrument. Now, as a final note, uh, we can run a lot more complicated models. So here's one that adds a, um, an exogenous control variable, log of income per capita. We want to have that both before and after the vertical bar. And this one also adds an instrument, an additional instrument, which is another tax variable, which is discussed in the book. I won't go through their justification of that. So here we have two instruments and then uh, the rest of the regression. So running that and uh, uh, putting it in a table with our other two results thus far, we get something that looks like this. And here are our three different alternative estimates of the demand elasticity for cigarettes. The ordinary least squares is about negative 1.2. Our very simple IV model gave us negative 1.8. And our uh, somewhat more complicated IV model gave us about negative 1.3. All those estimates are pretty close together, so it would appear in this case that uh, doing the instrumental variables actually didn't really change things that much in terms of our estimates overall.
Okay, now let's go back to one last thing I wanted to discuss very briefly, and that is that we can run some special diagnostic tests when we run IV regression. And uh, we'll talk more about these in class. Uh, some of them are discussed in the Stock and Watson textbook. And they can be obtained by using this summary command. So we put summary and then the name of the regression, IV2 is the regression results, comma, the VCOV equals sandwich there that's in the middle. That's just a correction for heteroscedasticity. And then a comma and this diagnostics equals true is going to give us these extra diagnostic tests that can help us understand whether we have a, a good IV regression or not. So when I run those, I get something that looks like this. Here it is. It uh, repeats for us what that regression was that we were testing here. So that was our original, uh, the second regression, IV regression we ran. There's some information about the coefficients, etc. Here are the tests I want to just point out very quickly. One thing we don't want to have when we run IV is weak instruments. Weak instruments are instruments that don't really uh, help explain the X variable, the regressor. Um, weak instruments are a serious problem and they really invalidate IV results. So here's a case where you definitely want to reject the null. The null is weak instruments and here we can reject that. So we seem to have pretty strong instruments that we've run in this case. Which is to say that those tax variables really do help uh, predict the price of cigarettes that's paid by consumers. The wu hausman test is a test for whether there's a substantial, significant difference between the OLS and the IV reg uh, results. And um, if not, then maybe the OLS is just about as good as the IV reg. Maybe we don't have a big endogeneity problem here. And in that case, it's actually preferred to use OLS for some technical reasons. So if you reject the wu hausman test, it suggests that the IV reg regression results are quite different from OLS. And therefore, uh, assuming we have a valid instrument, we really do want to use instrumental variables. In this case, it's only very weakly rejected. It's uh, rejected at about the 10%, somewhere around the 10% level, but not at the 5%. So this very weak Wu Hausman result suggests that maybe the OLS really was, uh, was okay. It's not that different from IV reg, as we already saw from the results. Finally, the Sargan test is a test of uh, over-identifying restrictions on the instruments. Essentially, if you reject the Sargan test, then um, one or more of your instruments is uh, invalid. Uh, it's not always that informative. It cannot tell you whether all your instruments are valid, but it certainly can flag when something's gone wrong in cases where you have uh, multiple instrumental variables as we did in uh, IV reg 2 that we ran. Uh, in this case, it's not uh, rejected, so uh, so far so good. Um, but as I'll discuss in class, uh, this test can only tell you a little bit about whether you've got valid instruments. It's never the, the final word. So there's a little bit about uh, running IV reg in, in R. Uh, as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. The interpretation and the setup and making sure you have good instruments is always uh, the toughest part.